since 1893, Ole Miss football has had its share of gridiron greats don the red and blue. Some so spectacular that the individuals become anonymous or referred to by a single name. Rebel fans might have a few that come to mind. Takes a snap, here comes pressure, the give to Deuce. Deuce in the backfield, breaks a tackle, turns to the outside. The give to Deuce, Deuce right hand, breaks in the player of the 20. And he's got the first down, breaks a tackle on the Deuce is loose. Deuce for six. Deuce at He's doing it all tonight. He will score. The 20, the 10, five. Yes, my friends, the Deuce is loose. Although it seems only natural to see the Wymus McAllister running with the pigskin, football wasn't his only love at an early age. I was always a pretty good athlete, you know, whether it was soccer, baseball, basketball, I ran track. So whatever season it was, that's kind of the sport I played. I played every other sport up until my senior year, you know, up and well, really uh, up until I graduated from, from um, high school. I want to say somewhat I may have been under the radar, but, you know, some coaches saw me as a, uh, a safety. Some so coaches saw me as a linebacker, you know, and so I've always felt like that if I could get the ball, if I could touch the ball, I could do something special with it. And, and so that was my goal my senior year. And so when you, you, you read the paper and you see, you know, the top player, Terrence Metcalf, he was Danny Dozen, he's an All-American, Parade All-American. You see Romero Miller, Parade All-American, he's a Danny Dozen, top player. You have all of these great receivers that want to come and play with Romero as the quarterback. And I see one guy, Terrence Metcalf, who's an outstanding left tackle. I said, that's who I want to play with. You know, I can run behind that guy. And it all just started to come together in that way. Several freshmen have made an impact on this year's Ole Miss football team. And Kelvin Thomas gives us a special look at this special group. Uh, I came here, I, I'm, a, I'm a winner, I expect to win. And I think the guys who coming in, they expect to win too. Well, I can't come in and slack up, be a slack of red shirt, nothing like that. I feel like I needed to come in and play, get the job done. But I chose Ole Miss because it was close to home and then because of Miller Metcalf and Lucas and all the other guys that signed up. We're just trying to win. We're just trying to get better. We're just trying to win a national championship. One of the things that I always tried to take pride in, even as a freshman, probably didn't do it as well, but I wanted to know as much as the quarterback knew. And once you get that piece of it, once you get that part, the game is easy because it slows down for you. Deuce McAllister now is in in the backfield, a 6'1", 190-pound freshman from Morton, Mississippi. An outstanding-looking athlete in the two-a-days. He was a joy to watch. He's a youngster that was uh, All-State as a defensive back, and they've been toying with what to do with him offensively or defensively. It would take all of two games for the Rebel coaching staff to realize exactly where Deuce belonged in the backfield. Swings it out to the far side. Caught by McAllister. Hit at the 10. Breaks a tackle. Breaks another one at the 6. He's steamed to the 5. To the 4. He's to the 3. What a play by Deuce McAllister. He just will not go down. My freshman year, playing with John Avery, the thought process was, hey, look, John could, you know, he was going to soften the defense for me, and I would really pound the defense. And so that Motor City Bowl, that last drive, it may have been nine plays, and on those nine plays, I think I had seven carries. Really, that was John handing it off, the, the baton, to myself, and, hey, look, kid, it's yours now. You know, it's time for you to take over. And, you know, that's kind of really what I felt, and I tried to just go out and make him proud. Here's the snap, the give the deuce over the touch. Touchdown, Ole Miss! With that leap, the torch was firmly passed to McAllister and Deuce Mania would spread like wildfire. They call him Deuce, number 22. He's double trouble wearing red and blue. Deuce is loose, the Deuce is loose. When you talk football, everybody says he can do it all for the Ole Miss Reds. Deuce is loose, the Deuce is loose. He'll beat you up the middle. He'll beat you around the end. You can feel the breeze, but you can't catch the wind. Uh, well, I have a dog named Deuce, a Chihuahua. I have one named Deuce and one named Dex. So you can see where I come from. <laughs> yeah. When I say Deuce, what comes to mind? Deuce is loose. You know, you know, third down and one, second down and one. You know, everybody in the stands wanting him to get the ball. I just think that he brought a lot of excitement to Oxford. I mean, I remember the whole Heisman campaign. Um, 
think I had a bumper sticker on my car at the time. Um, just, I was glad that he was playing for my team and he wasn't on the other team and we weren't having to face him. Rich Basaccia, who was my running back coach at the time, he always would have a saying or something to me and you know, one of the ones that I remember the most was, they all came to see you play. Taken by Deuce at the goal line, far side, straight ahead to the 5, 10, 15, 20, sidelines, 25, 30, breaks a tackle, 40, breaks another one, 50, 40, 30, a 20, 10, touchdown, Ole Miss! To hear those fans scream your name, you know, it's, it's, it's a special feeling. And people thinking we were booing when we were saying Deuce, and they thought it was boo, and never quite getting that we were excited for him. He could jump when he got to the goal line. That was my favorite memory of him, is jumping and, ma and making the touchdown that way. Everybody knew it, it was coming, and they couldn't stop it. Well, I knew if I was able to get up off the ground at a certain level, then I was gonna just be able to jump over the top of a lot of guys. They give us to Deuce over the top, left side, touchdown! Takes the snap, gives to Deuce, he's over the top, he's in the end zone! There's the snap, it's Deuce over the top, he's in there, touchdown. Waiting for the snap, there it is, it's McAllister over the top, he's in the end zone! I think one of the plays that really comes to mind is uh, Mississippi State. It's the first play of the second half. Uh, Kedrick is the puller and Metcalf is the uh, double team block. It, it, it was perfect. There's the snap, the give to Deuce, straight ahead. Deuce breaks it to the 35, the 40, he may be gone! I kind of got spoiled by having this ex huge Jumbotron in the end zone. So at about 25 yards, I start watching myself. 30 to the 20, to the 10, to the 5. He dives in the end zone. Touchdown, Ole Miss! Deuce was steaming hot coming off his record-breaking career at Ole Miss. But it was now time for him to turn his attention to the next level. After the senior year, going into the NFL draft, um, at that time, I'm, I'm, I'm considered one of the top five prospects in the draft. Like you probably can predict who I have at the top. Deuce McAllister running back hey, at Deuce. Ole Miss. Well, all Six, right. one and a half, 220 with breakaway speed. Well, Deuce McAllister right now, best senior out there for 2001. I know that makes Mr. Herb Street happy. I ended up getting picked 23rd. I'm devastated. In a way, I'm, I'm excited, I'm happy because the Saints picked me, but I'm devastated, really. Nine years later, we call it a career. I always look back, I know I can't change it, but I always wonder if Ricky wasn't there my rookie year. I mean, cause you gotta, uh, I only had 16 carries as a rookie. Now I had 40 plus catches, but I only had 16 carries. So I feel like in a way that was a lost season. I was hurt for two years, ACLs to the left knee and the right knee. So in a way, I feel like that's a, those are lost seasons. So out of eight years, I only really play five, and I'm able to go over 6,000 yards, become the leading rusher in uh, New Orleans Saints history, but you always wonder, man, if I could have really played those three years, how different would have things have been? Speculation aside, Deuce has made quite a life for himself since retiring from the game. Restaurant owner, entrepreneur, philanthropist, not least of which, color commentator for, you guessed it, the New Orleans Saints. How you doing, sir? Doing good. What's going on, baby? Good, baby. good to see you. What's going on, champ? I don't know. You doing all right? Good to see you. How you doing, young lady? Hey, I'm doing good. This is 17 years going on, so uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like a family reunion from the security to obviously the coaches and the players, but particularly the security. Right here, this is the tunnel. This is basically where the players would enter. Deuce McAllister. How you doing, buddy? This guy thinks he's still the fastest guy in the state I of Mississippi. I'm not running him. I guarantee you that. Fred McAfee, Mississippi College legend, uh, Philadelphia, Mississippi. I'm curious to see if they give him some first team snaps. I want to hear what Deuce has to say about that. How about it, Deuce? I think we disagree on, on Drew playing. I think that he'll probably get about two series, depending on how those series fare. Deuce, the All-American man, has reached the summit due to his work. And it all started with an education from the University of Mississippi. If you put your mind to it, you know, and you can get that education, um, that can open a lot of doors for you. And so if a small kid, I mean, if a kid from uh, small town Mississippi, Ludlow, Mississippi, 
dirt road can make it to the NFL, then I know that any kid in Mississippi can do. And one of the best decisions for me was going to the University of Mississippi. Not only did it allow me to play football, but it allowed me to be able to pursue an education and you know, just off the field as well. He's just one of those guys that built the foundation here and makes you, you know, you see him go to the next level. So that's somebody you wanna, you wanna be, look up to and follow his footsteps. It's crazy, like, you don't notice that people have walked these same paths that you have. So it's like, it's incredible to see like somebody who's been here, done it, and at the level he's at. He is what we sell to all these players that, hey, you know, a Mississippi kid could come in here, you know, you can, you can fulfill all your dreams on the field, off the field, and I think he is just a great example of, uh, of an Ole Miss Rebel.